Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. AMA corrects misinformation on drone laws. FAA expands drone airspace authorization program. And FAA recommends drone operators wear a reflective vest. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. AMA has sent a letter to ICAO correcting misinformation about current recreational UAS regulation and sightings and emphasizing the importance of education in promoting airspace safety. In the letter, AMA President Rich Hansen writes, Unfortunately, as drones have become more popular in recent years, there has been a significant amount of misinformation about the existing laws recreational UAS pilots must follow. Even those who work on drone policy sometimes inaccurately characterize the current regulatory regime governing UAS. This is why AMA has worked diligently for years to educate the public on the laws and the basic guidelines for flying responsibly. For existing drone laws to work, they must be followed, and if they are not followed, there must be consequences. Increased education for the public and increased enforcement against careless and reckless operators is critical, he said. In addition to correcting misinformation, AMA emphasized the importance of enforcing the current drone laws. AMA urged ICAO to consider the full picture and the existing regulatory framework when creating standards and recommended practices for drones, and when making recommendations to the United States on UAS regulations. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. After a successful debut at EAA or Venture Oshkosh 2017, the Twilight Flight Fest at the Fun Fly Zone will return for Air Venture 2018, with some exciting additions to the lineup of activities. In addition to the nighttime 3D RC airplanes seen at the Fun Fly Zone in 2017, look for 3D RC helicopters in 2018. As in the past, EAA's STOL Invitational will kick off the evening festivities, with a number of highly modified Bush aircraft showing off their impressive capabilities. A hearing last week by House Transportation Committee's Aviation Subcommittee was dominated by concerns about drones. FAA Associate Administrator for Aviation Safety, Ali Barami, told the panel that the FAA agrees that something needs to be done to regulate them. We need to work with you. Oregon Democrat Pete DeFazio said that Congress acted stupidly when it rejected regulating the rapidly growing number of recreational drones in the U.S. He said he believes all drones should be registered and possibly licensed. A drone being flown in the area around Dunstable Airport northwest of London nearly collided with a glider on approach to the airport, according to the UK Airprox board. According to the report, the pilot of an ASK-21 glider told the board that he was performing a standard circuit at Dunstable. The weather was gray and overcast with a rain front approaching from the west. A drone was allegedly encountered at 550 feet just prior to the final turn for approach. The International Drone Racing Association has announced that Miracle Flights, the nation's leading health and welfare flight organization, is the official charitable partner for the 2018 Drone Racing Series and 2018 Challengers Cup. Established in 1985, Miracle Flights provides free commercial air transportation to critically ill children in need of medical care far from home. That was our Drone Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. As the third annual UAS Symposium kicked off in Baltimore, Maryland Tuesday, Acting Administrator Dan Elwell announced the FAA is expanding tests of an automated system that will ultimately provide near real-time processing of airspace authorization requests for unmanned aircraft operators nationwide. Under the FAA's Part 107 Small Drone Rule, 
operators must secure approval from the agency to operate in any airspace controlled by an air traffic facility. To facilitate those approvals, the agency deployed the prototype Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability at several air traffic facilities last November to evaluate the feasibility of a fully automated solution enabled by data sharing. Based on the prototype success, the agency will now conduct a nationwide beta test beginning April 30th that will deploy LAANC incrementally at nearly 300 air traffic facilities covering approximately 500 airports. The final deployment will begin on September 13th. Drone operators using LAANC can receive near-real-time airspace authorizations. Beginning April 16th, the FAA will also consider agreements with additional entities to provide LAANC services. Currently, there are four providers, AirMap, Project Wing, Rockwell Collins, and Skyward. Applications must be made by May 16th. Interested parties can find information on the application process on the FAA website. In order to help bolster public awareness of small UAS operations and reduce the number of distractions for remote pilots and others participating in small UAS operations, the FAA recommends remote pilots in command, anyone operating the flight controls of the small UAS, visual observers, and any other person providing assistance in the small UAS operation wear brightly colored and reflective vests during flight operations. In an information for operators released by the agency, the FAA recommends remote pilots and other persons participating in the small UAS operation wear brightly colored and reflective vests during such operation. The vest should have wording on the back identifying the individual as a remote pilot, visual observer, or other person participating in the small UAS operation and include a caution against distracting the person wearing such vest. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-niche.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org.